Yeah, I mean, we were just talking outside that you know it's nice to feel grateful about other people being grateful, being in the place, and that's a very way, a nice way of uh, just feeling, feeling, feeling in common. You know, together. Um, but I want to talk to you today about um, a very dear topic um, that I that I carry around with me, which is the idea of uh, universal basic income, uh, which is a big sort of mind, uh, you know, mouthful. Uh, some people just say UBI, which is a better way of condensing stuff. Uh, but uh, I would like to uh, just uh, start by saying what basic income is, universal basic income is. Uh, I'm sure many of you are already familiar with the term and have heard it many times. Uh, and it's flowing, floating around the imagination of the world, which is a good thing, you know, it's a hopeful thing. Um, uh, but before I do that, I will, maybe I'll just introduce myself very quickly, uh, I guess. Uh, so my name is Julio, I am originally from Guatemala. I, uh, I moved to Taiwan when I was 19 years old, and I lived in, in the island for six years, uh, where I fell in love and met my partner, and then I... And then, Recently, we moved to London to continue uh, our journey. Um, I studied anthropology. I'm an economic anthropologist. Uh, I try to study, you know, what is called the human economy. Uh, economists often uh, make models about the world and then try to uh, blame the people when their models fail and people die. Uh, I like to first ask the people what they what they what they deem is the the best for them. And it's also why I got interested in basic income, because the idea of universal basic income is uh, uh, that it's an amount of money that is given to all in a political community, uh, distributed equally, uh, unconditionally. And this is the key point. Uh, often, uh, nation states in the world give out uh, what they call a, a cash transfer to many people. Uh, in South Africa, I think 40% of the people live on cash transfers, but they are conditional. So I have to prove to you that I'm poor, or that I'm a woman, or that I'm a something to be able to get it, right? Um, the unconditionality of basic income <coughs> is probably part of its power because it allows us to use our creative energies how we want and decide for ourselves what is good for us. Um, so, but because we are in a universe of here, I want to start by talking about the universality of a basic income. You know, what is a what what you know, what, what do you think when you think of universals? You know, this is a big question that often uh, we ponder. Uh, uh, you know, as, not only as as as, 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 as you know, me as an anthropologist, but as humans. You know, it's a big word when I say this is a universal. You know, you are a universal, and you are a universal, and you are a different universal. Um, but when we speak of a basic income, uh, let's say from an academic perspective, you know, oftentimes uh, it is spoken of uh, for the nation state. So the universal ends, uh, so far as I am no longer in the Republic of Germany, or in uh, or in Taiwan, or in or in Guatemala. And so, um, you know, when I was in Taiwan, I started uh, digging into into these questions, and and we we found that one of the basic income. Uh, uh, like earth projects there, and uh, and you know after a while it, the, the question came coming back to me. You know, even if you have a basic income, let's say in Switzerland, how does that solve the problem of global inequality, uh, uh, of wealth inequality, from which uh, we now uh, encounter ourselves as a humanity project, uh, right? And um, and 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 that's that's kind of how I got here, I guess, uh, to Germany, to Berlin, uh, because. Um, I'm part of a, a project which I'll explain later, which is trying to um, sort of rethink of the relationships that we have you know, with each other and the world through the production of money uh, and through the creation of a basic income that is made from the organic communities that exist already in the world. Uh, so it's coming. Hi, <coughs> Karina. Uh, so yeah, what is what is the universal? You know, uh, if we, I start from the perspective of thinking that every, each and every one of us is a different universe, the 
different unique and individual universe that is interconnected nevertheless with other universes. Uh, uh, you know, so a, a, some people call it a multiverse, some people call it a pluriverse. The words don't matter, you know, it, it, what matters is the meaning behind them. Um, I think, um, uh, so, so if we start from there, like, what does it mean to have a universalist? You know, could we talk about a seven billion uh, people-based income, a global-based income that allows us to all be equally, right? But to do that, uh, it's essentially a challenging of the relationships that we have with, you know, institutions such as the nation states, as banks, as uh, as international, uh, as supranational institutions uh, like the International uh, Monetary Fund, uh, the World Bank. Uh, the UN even, you know, all these institutions. What does it mean uh, to be a human being and live today in 2018 and share resources in a way where it allows us to live as a unit, as a planet? Uh, and by, but at the same time, by remaining grounded in, on the local, on what's happening in the here and now around us. Um, so, so, you know, to exist, I, th I, think, I think basic income, um, you know, it presents us with a possibility to rethink uh, our relationship to the world and to each other, and um, yeah, and you know, and, and thus, you know, money, money, money has borders, right? I, I am no longer in, in Guatemala when, when people accept the, the quetzal, the currency of Guatemala, uh, but at the same time, money connects us, right? So we are together because we, uh, uh, because of many things, but one of the ones that connects us always is money. Uh, and this is an un uncomfortable fact for people, uh, but, but it, it is nevertheless true. Uh, and why is it? Why is it that money connects us, you know? Uh, I think this is not, you know, oftentimes money, people, the way that people understand money is as, as a thing, as an object that we can, you know, that we can buy a commodity. Uh, but money is not a thing. You know, money, money is it's a, it's a it's a process. It's a sign of a social relation between two people. It's a set of promises that I make to you and that you make to me. So in a way, money is, uh, in fact, a, a form of debt you know, that we have to, to each other and to the world, uh, right? But we are just, you know, uh, so we don't challenge that because you know, money is the water in which we swim, you know? Like fish, we don't question it, we just live in it most of the time. It is only because some of us have the privilege to dwell into these, you know, heavy metaphysical topics and spend time on them to, you know, uh, even even ponder about these things. And, and so, what do we do with this knowledge? Uh, um, so, so yeah, money money represents uh, the debts that we have with one another. Uh, it reminds us that we need each other and that. We are separated and you know, uh, unique and diverse individuals, but also, but also a commons. We're not only individuals. I think neoliberalism has fed us this idea that we're all uh, atoms uh, disconnected from each other without energy, without um, anything that uh, makes sense, you know, and all the responsibilities given the commons. And that, is, that doesn't, doesn't have to be the case. Uh, it is only because of the fact that. Um, money is produced and made in a certain way that we also feel the consequences of it all. Uh, what is the nature of money? Or as I like to put it, what is uh, the money of nature? Uh, money, like anything else, uh, has, a, has an ecology, uh, an internal uh, logic to itself, and, 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 its and, and in all its relationships to the world. Uh, Money is a measure of our in interdependence. Uh, it is like social energy, you know, the, the water in which we swim, as they said before. And yet, uh, money is made scarce by bureaucrats and and, and, and policymakers and central bankers and, and private bankers. Does anybody know here how money is produced today? Zero money. Like for every debt somebody takes, like you can take nine times or ten times more. Fractional reserve. Ten percent, I guess. But the, the institutions that make money, I mean, at least uh, as far as I checked, 
um, most of them were banks, right? Private banks giving you debt with interest that you have to pay back and feel guilt about. It's funny, you know, because uh, what's the, the German word for, for debt? Schuld. And what's the German word for guilt? Yeah. <laughs> this is how they get us, you know. Uh, we don't have to pay back all of our debts. Uh, we can decide which ones we want to pay back. And I think um, that's essentially the exercise at Imagination which we're trying to ask ourselves is how do we reconstitute those relationships and ask ourselves, you know, what it is that we owe to one another and how do we want to live, right? So by, you know, money doesn't have to be at the control of the bureaucrat. We can produce money differently and make it ourselves. We even, in fact, with the value that we produce in the world, uh, just in our everyday actions, uh, we are already uh, giving something to, to the universe. <laughs> um, some confuse money for the meaning of life. You know? We get lost. Uh, this is because money I mean, carries a lot of different types of meaning within it. Uh, there is a morality to money, of course, the morality of debt the should uh, we have and how we deal with this with this guilt and with this debt. Uh, you know, Mesopotamian kings would forgive the debts of their people every time they came to power because they knew that the, the rate of interest of the debts rise exponentially in comparison to the normal rate at which other things go. And people were happy about it of course because they were so they, they had a jubilee, you know. Um, now, yeah, these people make a tool of, the, of guilt, you know, of the debt that they monetize. And they tell you that, you know, now you have to sell your time for, for it. Uh, universal basic income, in a way, is uh, completely against that because it tells you the money comes every month just because you exist, uh, because you are present in the world today. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as I said, uh, yeah, Nietzsche had a book on this idea of the death and the guilt. Uh, we can talk about that later. Um, but you know, nevertheless, money is always a token of our creative powers. You know, it helps us to do things, to uh, trust. You know, the trust that we put into money is what makes it real. It's uh, this is why money is like magic. You know, magicians are the ones that make you believe that what they're doing here is somehow real. Uh, it's a fetish. Money is a fetish. We give it powers and then it has powers over us. Um, yeah, so as, as I said before, I'm part of a, group, uh, of a group called Circles and we're trying to you know, make a tool to distribute uh, the potential of a, of a universal or pluriversal basic income uh, between the different communities that organically exist already in the world. Uh, and but that has to be a question that we ask ourselves today. You know, who do I relate to? Who, you know, what am I doing in the world? Um, yeah, and uh, one that does not rely on banks for its creation. What about human memory banks? The memory of our relationship. Money is a memory bank. Uh, the way that we keep track of what's happening, right? All the accounting is in the archaic memory sheet. Uh, You know, communities can come together and, and generate their own basic income. You know, this is an exercise at asking what do we want to value and what is value, yeah. But the value of money comes from its social life, uh, from all the relationships that we have. It doesn't come from uh, Angela Merkel or the, the Deutsche Bank saying this is what we want. You know, we maintain the relationships, uh, do not let the bureaucrat uh, fool you. <laughs> They are the, the, the dark magicians of the day. Um, today, you know, if you want to do anything that benefits society or that you feel it's meaningful, uh, you get paid nothing, you get paid shit, and uh, you are probably ironically in debt to a bank. Uh, but if you do uh, any other type of, of job that you don't want to do and you hate, uh, you're probably going to have a salary and you're going to feel guilt, you know, <laughs> for, some, for the meaninglessness of it all. You know? But it doesn't have to be. Another world is possible, and it's happening. Um, basic income is you know, given and shared equally by all, uh, because we all share the burden uh, of, of, of each other, of existing and, and living together and trying to live together. There is always a plurality. 
not only a singularity. Uh, so this is as far as I wrote, so uh, I'll leave it there, but we can just talk about it. And, yes, open up questions and discussions. The thing with uh, existence is funny because in Germany you say, Ich habe Existenz, ich möchte eine Existenz gründen. Existenzgründung means I want to found the existence. But it's coupled with money. Like I want to found and raise the existence. Like, but you exist. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to found a new existence. And you exist. For example, for example, Ich habe Existenz und Ängste. Ich habe Angst um meine Existenz. It's coupled with money. You say, Existenz, Ängste means when you lose your flat, for example. When you lose your job. Ich habe Angst um... Oh. That's always coupled with money. It's in the language. It's manifested, manifested in the Sprache. That's the play. I'm afraid about that. How strong is this mind? Fuck, sorry for this word. <laughs> yeah, but I'm very radical. Uh, for the mind fuck. Yeah. Ex existence in our language in, in Germany is coupled with money. Just when you have money, you exist. And that's really it. I'm scared about this thing. Mm. The way money blurs the relationship between the self and the other, right? And that's why it's awkward. Mm. Money is awkward. People don't talk about money. You know, like I lived in Taiwan so long, like the first thing people ask is how much you earn. But if you ask this to a German, they will go nuts. <laughs> uh, it, it is awkward, you know, it's not polite. Is it not polite? You know? Yeah, so um, existence is tied with money because existence is tied with uh, your ability to sustain that existence. So in order for you to exist and be existing continually, you need resources. And uh, your ability to afford those resources, that token is money, that's why it's tied to existence. And uh, you know, when we talk about value or the money, uh, the way it works is basically uh, those, it's basically a token of those resources that you can afford, whether it's just a loaf of bread or a mansion, you know? So that's why it has to tie, be tied to existence. The problem is how we define what is value in our society. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. The, and since the money is controlled by uh, the governments and the banks, you know, they are the ones who define that value. And that value is basically your ability to extract it on how many resources of productivity. So the, it's in our current economic system, the capitalist system, that, is, that, that value is tied to productivity. And there are certain things that I think, as a person, you would value, which would not reflect in the value in the monetary terms, such as that could be artistic, could be the value that you know this for the for the survival for the survivability of this planet. That's value for living, but that's not reflected in let's say the way our monetary system defines value. So I think it's it's important to tie existence to money. I wouldn't say money, I would say to a concept of value, but we need a system that defines those, those values in a more holistic way, than in a more controlled like government and capitalist and oligarch controlled way. I would, um, I would say, uh, not least, uh, uh, what I observe is that is, uh, you know, before we, we lived in a lot of uh, like well-being states, States which uh, are uh, which uh, like should uh, sh uh, should uh, care about well-being of their citizens, and uh, now it's like changing because uh, I uh, there is some kind of crisis in governance, and uh, it's more and more going uh, from well-being state uh, to towards to more like happiness, uh, like like state is the idea that the state should provide some kind of happiness uh, to the people. And therefore, uh, always the critics, uh, now it's very huge critics, is on uh, GDP and all other measurements regarding how, uh, how uh, okay, how it's measured. 
and there are new like uh, new ways uh, of metrics are coming in. It's usually like uh, how how many how many people are satisfied with their uh, with their life and etc. And then, uh, which uh, I think is a very important thing here, is that uh, when you see these researches of happiness and happiness distribution, then there is some kind of uh, tipping point. Uh, it, it's in different countries, it's different. When uh, when it's true, when more and more and more income, uh, more people are uh, feel better off. And then there is a tipping point when uh, you increase the income, and uh, and uh, do not uh, people are not uh, any more self satisfied. And then there is more about lifestyle, self expression, etc. And one of the problems why uh, there is a problem of well being st uh, states is that uh, in a lot of European countries they are al already switched the point. So we uh, there are a lot of countries which are uh, are above this uh, uh, this threshold. Well, on average. Yes, on average. Oh, yes, on average. On average. Yes, of course. So, of course, on average. And uh, this is what I want to say that I think uh, you even can find uh, the how much is universal income could be. Yes, there are uh, some studies uh, where this, uh, like, where it doesn't make any more sense uh, when people are not more happier if they gain some more extra euros. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In circles, I guess, part of uh, the research has been. Happening is about what constitutes a basic life, right? Uh, by asking ourselves what you know, this question of what we want to value. So, not only the sort of the, the production of things and having things and all these things, but you know, as a as a, a professor of mine, my friend says, you know, make a cup once, but you wash it a thousand times. So most work is just maintaining things, maintaining people, caring for people and the machines. You know? I always often in the crypto spaces ask people who cares for the machine, you know, who's the one that maintains it, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, we forget that most of the world that actually happens never gets a wage. Uh, capitalism is factory. Outsources that to the household, to to you know, to, to other countries. Uh, you have maids uh, coming from the Philippines to Japan to Taiwan uh, because. Care work has been outsourced. Uh, you know, it happens here as well. Uh, but we just hide those things, right? They're invisible to us. What happens when we consider that as part of the basicness of it all? What happens when the caring classes, the reproductive classes of the world, uh, control the production of money instead of the bureaucrats? They, they know best, I think. I mean, as far as I can tell. Did you have another comment? Uh, I am. <laughs> we already went a bit further, but what I wanted to say is that I think uh, money is an imagined concept. It doesn't really exist. It's something that we see in coins and in paper, and we think, oh, okay, this is something I can touch and this is something I can use because we humans need something palpable in order to, to work with it. But it doesn't actually exist. Like, as has been said before, a bank can take nine times as much resources as it has in debt, and not, like they're not going to be held accountable for it. Or the fact that capitalism tells us that we work for a certain amount of time and then we get a unit of payment back. <laughs> and we get a unit of payment back is uh, not adequate as well because if the people who would work the hardest that um, would get the most money, they'd all be farmers, right? And the people. Why enough, farmers? Because I do think that farmers work a lot. It's a simplified version, right? But we know that farmers struggle a lot all over the world and they get these who pay nothing because of their exploitation structures that we have more in the countries that are better. And we have people that don't work at all and make more money than these people because the money works for them. So I think that, um, yeah, money itself is an imagined product. And then we come when we come to value, value is also really a difficult subject because it's open for interpretation. And the things that are closer to us seem more valuable, intermediate less, and the things that are far away from us seem less valuable, even if we don't talk about money, if we talk about elections, political importance, and so on and so forth. And that's why it's really hard for me to like think about basic income, even though I think it's a really good idea. It's because what I consider valuable and what I would see exchanged in worth or in money would be completely different from another person, and I want to respect that. Can I add to that? Like the, 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 the issue
true. It's a, I mean, I, yeah, it's, farmers work the hardest, but what happened in the world is that, like, uh, I mean, it was less than six years ago, globally, maybe 80% of the population had to work on farms to survive. And since that, we have so much more technology that right now the global uh, share of the uh, economy is, I think, less than 5% of GDP globally in the world is, is farming, agriculture. Like agriculture, the, the work that needs to go into agriculture is totally, uh, you know, like if we compare it to any other industry, it's, it's, it's nothing. So we, we, we have so much, uh, we progress so much as a, as a, a culture and with technology that the agricultural work is almost unnecessary right now. I completely agree with you, but the fact that an individual farmer is still working really yeah. hard to sustain his life is still there. But Even though I understand he's working yeah. effectively, mm -hmm. like I know a lot of farmers that mm -hmm. don't have a lot of land, but they're making a hundred thousand per year uh, because they sell bio uh, vegetables to, to like, rich people. So it's, uh, if you work hard and you find the people that are willing to give you the money that you think you deserve, you will be rewarded. The so fact that a person even has the possibility to to have the knowledge and the privilege to know how to work hard, first of yeah. all, and second of all, to have the chances to someone, like that someone pays them adequately, is already, like it's already here, you know? Mm -hmm. But what about these people yeah, who are here? But, but, but we, you're right. Yeah. The, the, the options are available, like, like six years ago, 80% uh, of the world population died if they didn't work on the farm, and right now it's like, one percent of the population will die. That's maybe in Germany, like, yeah, but you yeah. yeah. also yeah. consume yeah. things yeah. from home. I think, I think it's... Uh, and, and I'm sorry, I think like the, the fact that I, I wanted to use the farm as an example, I'm not breaking it down to farmers, right? I, I know that there are a lot of, there's a lot of work all over the world which is completely yeah. underpaid and unjustifiably underpaid. I think it's very honestly to say two things. Uh, one thing, uh, no, 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 I think uh, we need to understand that money systems there could be different ones. There always could be alternatives. And, and in which we live is uh, the recent, like, I don't know, 100 uh, years phenomena, no, even less. And second is, even uh, we like it or not, uh, we, can, uh, we can track what kind of goals this money system has. And, and this is very easily. We, we can ask uh, what central bank, for example, I don't know, in Germany or in the EU or in Latvia, what they are tasks. And usually what they are tasks they are usually linked with, uh, with facilitating uh, growth of GDP. But uh, it's the idea of, uh, uh, that you need uh, growth, you need uh, consumption, and etc. But it's true that it's the same thing. We can redesign the system. We can say, OK, maybe we can, we can produce and we can design a money system, which should, uh, in general, produce more happiness. Or, it, uh, or it, uh, vice versa, not uh, uh, introduce more consumption, uh, more consumption but uh, let's say preserve natural uh, resources. So you can you can design uh, different systems, and we just uh, like historically design one, which of course work for for more let's say capitalistic model. Yes, and it's true. It's uh, well, okay more for consumption, which pushes uh, uh, people work uh, uh, say work more. This was all idea behind. But we we could reimagine different systems. No doubt. Like I think it's like progress, like 100 years ago, we would die if you didn't have this driving force to, to do things more effectively. And right now we are at the brink of, a, like in, in, in maybe less than 50 years, every manual work will be automatized. Yeah. Like there will be no working people in the world if we do it right. And like what's money then? It depends on what you mean by work. Yeah. Yeah, but so uh, universal income kind of the taxes idea of scarcity, like, especially for the really conservative people, you know, like, I don't know, my parents growing up, they said you have to work hard for everything, and there's, you know, if you work hard enough, you can have what you want, but the fact is, is scarcity is usually made up, it's usually just a construct, value is assigned generally by scarcity, why is all valuable, because there's not that much of it, why, you know, etc., if you start thinking in different terms, saying it's okay for everybody to have what they need to survive, the scarcity problem falls away, which means it creates a new value system.